The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. And because there's an international tournament on at the minute, we're talking about an international number nine. One of the one of the England greats that signed mm. for Leeds United. That's exciting, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Who, who is it? It's it's Michael Ricketts, <laughs> <laughs> guy who uh, signed for us in July two thousand and four after the relegation from the Premier League. Went on to make uh, twenty eight appearances across the Championship and the League Cup. That's, that's good. How many yeah. goals did he get in the Championship? Two, two goals he got, both in the League Cup, <laughs> not in the Championship. <laughs> <laughs> this is the TSP guide with me, Dan and Michael and Rob Conlon to Michael Ricketts. So Ricketts. Um, Grew up a Birmingham City fan, uh, but he was in Villa's academy as a kid then. So he's done he's done a bit of a tour of the Midlands, hasn't he? At 16, he was released, ended up at Walsall. Yeah, and he, he did well there. Is that was Springboard? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Let's not, be, let's not be too mean about Ricketts. No, because, you know, because he's, he's played football at a professional level. He just wasn't great for Leeds, was he? It goes well to a point. He's almost Jamie Vardy <laughs> to a point, and then it goes wrong. Because right. he, because he's been really, he's not not made it in academies. He's kind of had to start again at not quite as low as Vardy, but also we're like League One, League Two, the sort of perpetually at that level. So he's done all right there. He's got his big, bigish move to Bolton, who were in the Championship at the time under Sam Allardyce. They paid, depending on what you read, four hundred grand to half a million quid for him, and he does really well there. Twenty four goals in the Championship, scores in the playoff final, gets promoted with Bolton. Starts absolutely on fire in the Premier League. In so this the, is a guy on an upward trajectory, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. 01 02. It's his first season in the Premier League. He's got 15 goals by the middle of January. Because if you said to me now, a striker's got 15 goals in the Premier League, you'd be like, that's a £50 million player, isn't it? <laughs> Automatically, you're, you're talking a lot a lot of money these days for a 15 goal striker. Yeah, and it, he's still young at this point. It is incredible because I was um, watching back a YouTube video called Michael Ricketts Highlights mm. last night. And yeah, it looks like a different footballer. From what I remember, he's going through on goal, sitting the ge- keeper on his ass all the time when he putting the ball into an empty net, scoring lots of different goals, headers, good finisher. And then you see it as the video goes along, the level gets higher and higher and higher. He scores a couple of times at Ellen Road, I think. Yeah, he does. Um, and yeah, it's not, not something we could become accustomed to. Not the uh, not the player I remember. No, because I was I was trying to work out why we signed him because it's obviously quite a while ago. And my memories are, I remember him sort of bursting onto the scene and people being excited by him. And yeah, watching that, I've watched the same goals compilation. And I think I, because he was so slow by the time he got to Ellen Road, <laughs> I kind of assumed he was a more of a, a big lump up front mm, sort of player. Like a target man style. Yeah, but when you watch his goals, I'd say to liken him to anyone, I'd say probably Beckford would be the mm. the lead striker because he's he plays on the shoulder a lot. He scores a lot of goals from from sort of in the sort of 12 yards with a goal but then he's getting a, he chips in with some headers as well so he's kind of good in the air but not really a target man he plays on the shoulder quite a bit it's quite a few where he bursts through on goal and finishes I think I actually you're thought making of, him sound like a complete striker <laughs> I think I actually thought of Beckford myself because there's a couple where he sort of bends it into the far corner mm. as well um, but I think didn't he even say himself that people mistook him for a target man he said people compared him to Emil Heskey because yeah. he was built kind of and he wasn't that type of striker at all yeah, but the peak for him though was he got an England cap, which was famously used as a stick to beat him with. Eventually, wasn't it? Um, which I guess we might end up doing as well. But he got uh, an England cap. It was a friendly against Netherlands in two thousand and two, just before Valentine's Day, aged twenty three. Every, everything in front of him. It's quite sad in a way because like he must have got to this point and been like, "This, is, this is the beginning." Fucking hell! This is this is just starting for me. Like I'm I'm absolutely on fire. Made his debut with Darius for Sell. He actually did go on to play quite a bit for England. Did he score an overhead kick in that game? Or did he try one? I can't remember now. <laughs> God, I can't remember. He only played half the game, did Ricketts, right. sadly. I'll have to go away and Google that one. Um, so there's talk not long after that, though. Obviously, you get capped for England. It, it kind of it boosts your entire profile, doesn't it? And he's been scoring in the Premier League. Other sides are looking at him. Um, and then there's a fallout with Sam Allardyce at Bolton with Spurs, Fulham and Middlesbrough all sniffing around. Yeah, I mean, Spurs are being linked with a £10 million move at this point, which for someone who's been playing at Walsall a couple of years ago and has kind of come from nowhere. Exciting stuff. But yeah, Allardyce is kind of hinting at a bit of an attitude problem. Right. Um, because he says, if a player's been dropped by me this season, it's because they've put themselves in that position by not performing, and that applies to Michael. Um, he says, his goals have stopped flowing before his England call-up, which they had for about a month, um, but his former contribution to the team was still keeping him in the team. But his form has dipped since he played for England, and that's why I've decided to put him on the bench. That there are hints there of he's got too big for his boots, aren't there? But not in so many words. Yeah, and Ricketts was not 
particularly happy either. He's, he basically said that um, his teammates have been helping him out, but let's just leave it at that. So he's obviously having a bit of a, a dig back at Allardyce there, mm. which Big Sam probably not a man to mess with, I don't think. No. Uh, so he does leave Bolton and then ends up at, at Middlesbrough. Well, he does. He, he ends up sort of staying there for that some of that season and he's there for the start of the next season gets a few goals but never quite never quite recreates the form of the early um, the early Premier League days but he's got seven and then he moves um, he gets a transfer request in Spurs are back in for him again but he ends up they're trying to do a cash plus player deal and, and Borough are just willing to stump up the cash which is only three and a half million quid at this point because right. his stock has fallen and the transfer requests and stuff so it's all it's all been kind of chipped away a little bit um, but he's still he's still considered a potential decent striker at this point, I think, when he goes to Borough. Because three and a half million quid in 2004, no, 2003 this was, was still quite a lot of money for yeah, a player. it's not inconsequential money, that no, is it? No, it was, it was kind of a, it was an all right sort of fee was that. Um, but Middlesbrough, no, doesn't particularly work out for him there. Barely scores for him. Two years there, was it? Yeah. Uh, or thereabouts. Yeah, kind of a season and a half. Uh, only four goals, one of which was against Leeds. Of course yeah, he, it was. <laughs> <laughs> he rounds um, in, a, in our relegation season. He rounds Paul Robinson, uh, gets taken down and steps up and scores the penalty. Uh, <laughs> uh, where were we then at this time? We were knackered. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Is where we were. I mean, th- so this was when he did sign. He was essentially the replacement for Mark Viduka, who went the other way, wasn't he? <laughs> which, Mark Viduka, he used to get a stick at Leeds weirdly but one of the best players I think I've ever seen yeah at Ellen Road his touch and finishing just unbelievable yeah just supreme footballing intelligence great finisher I, I really liked Mike Viduka I think he was one of my favourites of that of that Champions League side but obviously the wheels had started to come off we were knackered and we had to get people off the wage bill but obviously we, we were locked in at that time to all sorts of ridiculous punishing deals whereby even if we sold uh, players for cash money we made a loss on them and had to pay a difference to a company we'd borrowed money from yeah we were basically in negative equity on loads yeah. of stuff weren't we so exactly there was, no, there was no way out of it like negative equity on your house but we had to sell the house yeah so we've already sold by this point I mean loads had left before obviously with um, Ferdinand Woodgate etc but by this point Smith and Robinson have just left Viduka's on his way to Middlesbrough we're still trying to get rid of Hart, Matteo, McPhail, Mills, Milner, Barnby Bridges is out of contract, Bat is retired, but this whole squad is completely gutted. This this is the season when Blackwell gave the line about it's just me and Gary Kelly at training. We would have probably tried to get rid of Gary Kelly at this point as well, I imagine, because he was also on a big Premier League contract. But it, it feels like we took a load of Ferraris and you know, some nice sports cars into the garage and we just came out with like some really <laughs> shit bangers. But don't yeah, don't worry, come in. He was our fifth signing. That's exciting, isn't it? All following on from Julian Jochin, Paul Butler, Clark Carlisle, and Danny Pugh. Yeah, so you can you can see how we, with all due respect to those players, how we traded down. I mean, like Julian yeah. Jochin had a profile in the game, but at this point, was his career was on the wane. Yeah, and like, well, like Danny Pugh was a promising youngster from Man United. Mm. He was all right for a bit, wasn't he? Pugh he scored quite a lot of goals <clears> at the start of that season. And then I'm quite fascinated by that season, that first season after relegation in the Championship, because I mean, it was the First season, I started going to Ellen Road properly, uh, which was glamorous. and But also just the sheer turnover of players. Like, we sign across the season, like, 20-plus plus p- players, mm. easy to say, and <laughs> let it go, like, the same amount. And often there's the same players in both lists. And, like, we were signing players on one-month contracts at the start of that season. It just seems insane. And it seems like... I'm not sure how we didn't get relegated again, basically. Yeah, I don't particularly want to give Blackwell too much well, credit. Cause hold I think, the line, caller. <laughs> because I, I kind of think he was, generally speaking, quite a knobhead, and most reports of players uh, would confirm that. But, yeah, to keep us up that season, probably pretty good. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so we signed him on the 23rd of June, 2004. Free transfer that saw Viduka go... Um, the other way and he was talked up I mean obviously they do talk up players when they arrive but he was talked up as a as a former England international wasn't he, he not a form, no he was not talked up as a former international he said the club official statement says he made his England debut against Holland and is still looking to add to his international cap wow so there's hope there so they do <laughs> it was, it was, he was kind of our biggest signing yeah of that summer which is troubling in a, in a lot and of that's ways that's no offence to him you know because I remember it seeming 
There's, there's yeah, some, I remember it seeming sort of exciting because he's still he's still in his mid twenties there. He's not. We're not signing other players. We signed in that summer. We, as you talk about the month to month contracts, it was people like Hignett and Guppy and mm. like Brian Dean came in for the full season. But you know, we were signing quite a lot of people at the end of their career. Danny Kadamatri was around that time, wasn't he? Went to my yeah. school. Nice. <laughs> we did. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I was just saying that there's almost interesting parallels with the whole Victor broken toys idea here, isn't there? We had, we had no option but to take broken toys at this point. <laughs> broken though. toys is what we got. But I think it, it took a lot of getting your head around and getting used to it this time that we were trading these players who had us in the Champions League two or three years previous to suddenly being thrown into the Championship mm-hmm. and having to get Championship level players. Um, how did it go for him, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you say that it was your first year at, um, at Ellen Road. What do you remember signing him and thinking that seems that seems all right? I, I, I definitely thought it seemed like yeah. an all right sign at the time. I remember at my school there was definitely talk of like, oh, Michael Ricketts is going to be the guy, mm. probably because he had played for England and people had heard of him, and it was like, well, you know, Smith he played for England, he's gone, <laughs> but we've got this other England international in, it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah, it didn't didn't go well. Um, so the start of that season, I was looking back over it, and essentially we we signed. We got Joachim and we got Dean and we got Ricketts. None of the strikers scored. It was seven games in before a striker scored a goal. It was Danny Pugh was contributing quite a few. But jo- Julian Joachim manages to score in the, in the seventh game. Um, and Blackwell, this is again from the official site. I think he's trying to, I think he's trying to be, be nice. supportive of Blackwell of um, Ricketts later on. But he says Michael's a frustrating player and I haven't got Michael Ricketts because Leeds had loads of money to spend. Michael's here because of deals that were done. Come on, that's, come not, on. that's Cheers, not, the hard, <laughs> not the hard sell, is it? But there's yeah. no doubt about it. The kid has something, and we have to be patient. Fans and management alike. So this this was very much a look. We desperately need Viduka off the books. <laughs> if you take this guy, we'll take Viduka. Yeah, the, the official statement said the two weren't linked, but yeah, right. there's a, there was a feeling that maybe they they were. Um, and he also says, yeah, Rick, it's, he's not alone in needing his first goal. Joachim and Dean, they've all they've all come close as well. So yep. without success. So it's not it's not all on him. And he was he was kind of talking him up saying there's definitely something there <laughs> if we can if we can access it. Um but we didn't. <laughs> and it, it just never kicked off for him, did it? I mean if when you look at the number of strikers that we had across the course of that season, it was just like trying to chuck everything at the wall and seeing if any of it stuck. Because we had Ricketts himself, uh, David Healy, Joachim, uh, Marlon King, Rob Hulse, Brian Dean. Kadamatri, Ian Moore, and the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah, I mean, he did score in that season. He did. In the League Cup against against Swindon. I was trying to find uh, some commentary of that to put a clip in, but the, the only version I could find doesn't have any commentary, so it's just <laughs> a very empty Ellen Road, sort of half cheering a Michael Ricketts goal. I mean, it's, a, it's an all right goal. But yeah, I think the fact we start quite quickly trying to replace him mm. shows the way it was going for him, because Brian Dean was signed very much to be the understudy to Michael Ricketts and soon enough finds himself in the team ahead of him and then at the same point November we're getting David Healy in and then across the, the season as well like Nathan Blake arrives on loan gets injured but he was obviously ahead of him and then it's Rob Hulse comes in and gets ahead of him and it's, it's there was a, a desperate need to replace him I was going to say I was kind of too young to sort of appreciate style of play and the intricacies, intricacies of football and things like that but I remember there being a definite difference when Healy, for instance, came in and just scored some goals. And mm. I was there for Rob Hulse's debut when he scored two fantastic goals against, was it Reading? Yeah. And it was like, bloody hell. That's <laughs> like what strikers are meant to do. I, I've, I've not really seen that yet. Yeah. And so Hulse coming in meant that Ricketts went out. So he goes out on loan to Stoke for the re- for the rest of that season. It was, it was a long, slow exit, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, he doesn't do well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he, he, then he ends up back at Leeds for the season after. Gets another few games. Gets another goal. Yes. Come on, another goal against Oldham in the League Cup game. I'm sure you remember well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then by September he's out of the door to Cardiff, and then he does honestly does all right at Cardiff. Gets five in seventeen. Then he's back at Leeds, but then out again to Burnley, um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of. That's kind of the end. That's it that's, for him. That's the beginning of the end. Started for well for him though at Burnley. He got two in his first three. He did. He did. That is true. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the the start of his of his exit from Leeds. Yeah, and I mean, we're coming to this trying to be fair to him um, and look at his past career. 
and look at the comments that people have made about him. And that brings me to Brian Dean, because when people leave like this and they don't work out, people sort of caricature footballers. You know, like Thomas Brolin was painted in much the same way as being a fat waster. And that's what Michael Ricketts ended up getting tarred with that particular brush, didn't he? Um, but there were people at Wembley singing after Brolin, why is Brolin on the bench? Because people wanted to see him in the side and see what he could do. And Wilkinson never found a way to properly accommodate him, did he? And, and maybe shouldn't have signed him in the first place. He admitted the only time he got that wrong. Um, but with Ricketts, it's also coming out of the dressing room as well that he's he's maybe not in the greatest shape because Brian Dean had something to say about that. On uh, It was on BBC Radio Tees, wasn't it? Their Borough podcast. Yeah, this was from a later, obviously like a long, a long time after his playing career's finished, but he was... Um... Yeah, he was essentially being told at pre-season that he was behind Michael Ricketts. And then he said, um, from my point of view, I thought, well, I've still got my professional pride here. I can accept he's brought him in as his main striker, but I'm not going to sit here behind someone if they're not going to step up. My job was to push. And he's, he's basically just saying that um, Ricketts had a he had a, a weight problem. And when it came to pre-season, he wasn't fit. I mean, Ricketts, I found some stuff from Michael Ricketts saying that he'd only ever managed like one full pre-season after the, the year at Bolton because he was always injured, which was I think was a problem for him. He did constantly yeah. carry injuries. But then it's a tough balance because you, every ex-pro has got who hasn't been successful or has not managed to maintain any kind of peak always has a thing about, oh, I've got injuries and then X, Y and Z happened to me and it wasn't really my fault. But he, he could have been injured and not fat. <laughs> I think um, <laughs> it's telling coming from Dean as well because he always strikes me as a very nice guy. Yeah. And I don't think he would necessarily throw someone under the bus yeah. like he kind of has to well age. yeah because he says um, yeah Dean he's a very nice man is Brian Dean but he says I just thought I can't accept being second in line behind Michael I'm not talking about ability or anything I'm talking about an attitude in training and the rest of it um, I thought I have to do what I, what I do to stay in the team so Michael actually inspired me to push a little, more, a little bit more but yeah Brian Dean 37 at this point yeah and in far far better shape than the lad in his mid-twenties we brought in who played for England a couple of years ago it's amazing isn't it how footballers even when they're basically on a huge downslope like this. And it's quite evident from the stuff that's been said there in retrospect and what you could see at the time with your own eyes. It wasn't going to work out. He left the club in the summer of 2006 and ends up uh, at South, well, End. South End, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, they were in the championship, in fairness, um, at the time. But there's a. It's described as we agreed a transfer package. We yeah. had, he had a year left on his deal. So presumably that. We'll pick up his wages. That and, meant yeah. a payoff for him because he'll have still been on um, on decent money from his, his borough days. And he, there's a. This is where the, the trend kind of kicks in with him because if you look down his Wikipedia, pretty much every entry after Leeds says his contract was terminated by mutual consent. He left the club after <laughs> after his contract expired, terminated by mutual consent, and that is essentially the... Uh, That's the story of it the from there. So, yeah. so he joins the South End, and then by the October, um, they've got rid of him as well. It's unfortunate. So do we still have to pay his wages if we've agreed it? <laughs> But we're paying them money to not have him. I don't know. Probably, yeah. So he's from there. He goes on dotting around different clubs. So he's he has spells at Preston, Oldham, Walsall, and Tranmere after that. And he does play against us a couple of times. I, look, I looked into this, and he was um, he was giving it the big and talking about us when he was playing for Walsall, saying um, it's always nice to go back, and I'm sure I'll take the sting away from the rest of the players because there'll be twenty five thousand people baying for my blood. I never got on with certain people at the club who are at Sheffield United now. <laughs> Just say Kevin Blackwell, mate. <laughs> Unless he was made it, I don't know. There's Hulse gone there or yeah, something by that point. Ruffles. I'm thinking he probably means Matt, Matt Kilgallen. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he means. Um, I'm sure he means means Blackwell. But he's, he does say there's some great people there, and a terrific club. Um, but I'm not playing for them anymore, so I have no allegiances. Anyway, we, we won three 0 You did a match report around that time, as that, well, didn't you? That was when he was. He ends up leaving there and ends up at John Barnes's Tranmere. He had a very brief stint in charge there. And he that was his debut for Tranmere. Another 3-0 win for Leeds at Ellen Road. Um, but yeah, I, uh, sensing the crowd were in good humour, he then introduced ex-Leeds and ex-England, yes, England, old boy Michael Ricketts. Normally I'd be cautious of our old place coming back to haunt us, but not him, not today. Ricketts <laughs> for England rang around the cop as he once again proved that his form of 2002 was nothing short of miraculous. That was your match report in the square ball. I dug it out, yeah. Second second ever issue we, we were in charge of that one. Is it really? Mm. Wow. Wow. Um, Don't remember it at all. Final game, professional game anyway, was an FA Cup final defeat. To, final? FA Cup final. FA Cup third round, that says, yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> FA Cup, an FA Cup defeat. Sorry, right. that should just read to um, to Wolves. <laughs> and that was it. January 2010, um, contract cancelled by mutual consent. So from the course of his England debut in 2004 to his final appearance in 2010, 42 goals for nine clubs. And... Uh, that is that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't end well. Didn't well. He got um, 
he got 40 bookings and three red cards. I, I totted him up as well. So he ended up more cards than goals. Oh, wow. For, after in England. I mean, it, part of the reason he's, uh, he's second spell at Walsall, he was actually doing all right there, but he kept getting sent off. Got three red cards in that season. They say three red cards is a lot. <laughs> yeah, he did well. That was all, They were all in one season as well. So Proper Berard did it. Mm. There you go. That is a TSB guide to Michael Ricketts. Quiz to finish. Oh, go on. There might be more. But, you know, I thought of two other <laughs> I thought of two other Leeds players with a single England cap. Patrick Bamford. He's won. The other one wasn't. He wasn't a cap one whilst at Leeds. The other one. Another massive success. We'll probably do an episode about him at some point. Seth Johnson. Of course. Seth Johnson, there you go. There are probably others, but you know. They, are, they are episodes in themselves. <laughs> that wraps it up. That's the TSB guide to Michael Ricketts. The Extra Ball. 